Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a differential equation. An interesting one. We have y squared plus y prime squared equals 1. And y prime is the derivative of the first derivative of y with respect to x. And we're going to be solving for y here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation first. I want you to notice that we're adding two squares and the result is 1. So I'm going to be presenting kind of like two methods here. And one of the methods is going to involve this the fact that uh, sum of two squares equals one. But anyways, let's start with the first method. For my first method, obviously we had to tell ahead of time that y is differentiable, so on and so forth, it's continuous, whatever. I mean, all these good properties apply. And I have an equation like this. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. And the motivation behind it is I want to get rid of the squares uh, by differentiating both sides because the chain rule is going to apply. And then we're going to get something nice from here. So if you differentiate y squared implicitly because y is a function of x, we have to use the power rule first and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is called the chain rule. So the derivative of y squared is therefore 2y multiplied by y prime. Then the same rule applies here, but instead of y, we have y prime. So it's going to be 2 times y prime. And then the derivative of the inside, which is derivative of y prime, which is the second derivative of y. So it's going to be y double prime. And of course, 1 is a constant, so its derivative is going to be 0. So two motivations behind this. First of all, I want to get rid of the squares and kind of get, uh, make it nicer. Second motivation, I guess, behind this method is uh, we have a constant on the right-hand side. And by differentiating... Uh, we're getting a zero. So that's kind of nice because with differential equations, uh, you want to get a zero on the right hand side. Uh, and that kind of gives you like a homogeneous, I hope I said it right, a homogeneous equation. Okay, great. So now, this is factorable. Uh, let's go ahead and factor out 2y prime. And then we get y plus y double prime equals zero. This is a product, so we can kind of look at it, uh, each factor separately. Uh, y prime equals 0 is going to be our first case, case 1. And y prime equals 0 is very easy to solve. You know, derivative of which functions is 0. We just talked about it. That needs to be a constant. So y needs to be uh, a constant. Uh, let's use c for that. And uh, we can determine that constant in this case because we have a specific equation uh, that is given. And we can kind of plug in y and find out c. Let's go ahead and do that. So if you substitute y equals c into the original equation right here, you're going to get the following. y squared is going to be c squared. And y prime, as you know, is already, we already know that it's 0. So it's, just, it's not going to add anything to it, but let's just write it. c squared plus 0 is equals 1, and c squared plus 0 is equal to 1. And that gives us c squared equals 1. And that gives us two values, c equals 1 and c equals negative 1. So that means our function or our differential equation in this case has two solutions, y equals 1 and y equals negative 1. So these are solutions. But they're not the, the whole thing because we have another factor to look at. And it's going to be this one. And that's going to be actually more interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So we're going to call this maybe um, case 1 and then case 2. For case 2, we have y plus y double prime. But I want to write the y double prime first. So kind of like in order of uh, differentiation. This is the second derivative plus the function itself equals 0. So when you think about a problem like this, there are several ways to go about it, obviously. But one thing to keep in mind is you're differentiating a function twice and you're getting the opposite of the function, right? Because their sum is 0. So what kind of functions will satisfy that? Think about it. Can it be exponential like e to the power x? For example, if y equals e to the power x, let's just give it a try. The first derivative is going to be the function itself. The second derivative is going to be the function itself. Again, you can infinite, you know, infinitely many times you can differentiate it. You're always going to get the same function. So this is not going to help. How about modifying this a little bit, maybe going with e to the power negative x? Well, if you differentiate it once, you're going to get negative e to the power negative x. But then if you, if you differentiate it one more time, you're going to get a positive e to the power negative x. In other words, you're going to get the function itself 
by differentiating twice. So e to the power of negative x is not going to work either. So we kind of need a function whose second derivative is its opposite. And it's not the e to the power something. But it's, they're kind of related. And if you think about it, uh, you'll find out that it's the sine and cosine that satisfies this equation. Why? Because if you think about y equals sine x, its first derivative is cosine x. The second derivative is negative sine x. So they're opposites. The same thing applies to cosine x because the derivative of cosine is negative sine and then it, you get a negative cosine. So it works in both cases and we can kind of put them together and that's what we're going to do. But let me introduce the idea of character, characteristic polynomials. So if you have uh, a homo homogeneous equation, then you can ki kind of do the following. You can turn uh, this into a characteristic equation or a polynomial equation. And that would look like r squared plus 1 equals 0. Sometimes people will just write it as d squared plus 1 times y. Or it's a differential operator uh, acting on y. d squared means you're going to differentiate it twice. And 1 means you're not going to do anything to y, which is the same function. Anyways, so from here we get two roots. r is going to be plus minus i. And then uh, from here you can basically write the solution in terms of sine and cosine. So if you have a complex root, then it's just going to be e to the power something. I think it's you could probably write it something like this. And then uh, cosine of bx plus i sine bx. So here, a plus bi is going to be the solution. And of course, it's conjugate as well. Uh, is going to be the solution of the characteristic equation. But to keep a long story short, from here, we can safely say that y can be written as c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants, uh, but we still have to uh, plug these into the original equation because we were given a specific case. So we kind of have to make sure that our c1 and c2 are uh, determined as much as possible. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to differentiate this once first. That's going to be negative c1 sine x plus c2 cosine x. And let's go ahead and differentiate one more time. Actually, you don't really have to differentiate twice because if you do, you're going to get the opposite for sure. So that, there's no point. But we need to substitute this into the original equation. And remember, the original equation was y squared plus y prime squared equals 1. Now let's go ahead and substitute this. So if you square y, you're going to get c1 squared cosine squared plus 2c1c2 cosine x sine x. This is going to be y squared. And if you uh, square y prime, you're going to get c1 squared sine squared and then minus 2c1c2 sine x cosine x. Oops, it looks like I forgot one of the terms here. Uh, I'm supposed to add, uh, what is that called? Uh, c2 sine squared x. And then this will be y squared. And here I'm supposed to add c2 squared cosine squared x. And that would be y prime squared. And I'm supposed to add these and the sum equals 1. Now when you add these two quantities, the terms in the middle cancel out. And it leaves us with something nice because now we can factor out or combine these two terms like this. c1 squared times the quantity sine squared plus cosine squared plus c2 squared times sine squared plus cosine squared. And this is supposed to equal 1. But notice that sine squared plus cosine squared is always equal to 1. So from here, we can simplify our expression and write it as c1 squared plus c2 squared equals 1. So our solution is in this form. As long as c1 and c2 satisfy this equation. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit more specific. And I'll write it in a more compact form, much nicer form. Since C1 and C2 are two constants whose sum is 1, we can actually assign trigonometric uh, functions to them or trigonometric values uh, because C1 and C2 definitely, uh, they're going to satisfy the requirement of being between negative 1 and 1 because the sum of their squares is 1, obviously. So from here, let's set C1 equal to, oopsies, Let's go ahead and set c1 equal to, uh, what should we do here? I think it makes sense if we set it equal to sine alpha. 
and let's set C2 equal to cosine alpha. Alpha is any angle, but C1 squared plus C2 squared is always going to be 1, you can see from here trigonometrically. Now, if you substitute these values into our equation, something interesting is going to happen. That's why I picked these actually constants. You're going to get C from here, sine alpha cosine x plus cosine alpha sine x. And what does this remind you? If it doesn't remind you the sum formula, then you need to review your trigonometry. Or maybe you, already, you don't know trigonometry, but that's okay. You can always start learning trigonometry because it's fun. So this can be written as sine x plus alpha. And obviously, that kind of summarizes our equations like a system uh, with their given requirement. We can just write one equation that will satisfy the givens. And this gives us the second set of solutions. And uh, now let's go ahead and talk about the second method, sort of. The second method kind of involves some observations. So we have y squared plus y prime squared equals 1. And we said that if the sum of two squares is equal to one, well, we can kind of uh, set trigonometric uh, values here. For example, can I assume that y is equal to the, uh, you know, uh, sine of something? Could y be sine x, for example, right? It could definitely be. And in that case, uh, the derivative of sine x would be cosine x. And the sum of their squares is going to be one, so it works. And obviously, cosine x is also going to work because its derivative is negative sine x, unfortunately not sine x itself, but when you square, you're going to get positive sine squared and positive cosine squared, and their sum is going to be 1 again. So both of these solutions satisfy our equation. But guess what? Uh, we could put these together and write a linear combination of these, which can be written as c1 times cosine x plus c2 times sine x, and that basically brings us to the same point that we were before. But with the C1 and C2, obviously, uh, you are going to impose the requirement, so on and so forth. What about the constants, right? Uh, well, if you say that y is a constant, let's say, okay, y is a constant. If you just assume that y will be a constant, and then you can just plug it in and find it. Just like with functional equations, if there's a solution with constant functions, you can assume y or f of x is a constant, and then plug it in and find the value of that constant. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.